awesome. Yeah. What an awesome moment. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I have these old guys that work, uh, my wife, we got this house that was built in 1846. There's these old guys, Bob and Elwood. They're from Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And they're in their, they're in their 70s. And they're always working. And they, they, a lot of times they don't even use, like, a, a lot of, you know, they use electric tools, but not all electric tools. And they always sit. They, they, their wives make them these, uh, these uh, lunches and uh, little snacks at 9 o'clock in the morning. And at, and at noon they have their little snack. And, uh, or at 9 they have their snack. And at lunch, at, at noon they have their lunch. And, uh, and anytime I, I try to get together with, with them, you know, uh, you know, anytime I'm with them, I always try to listen in on their little lunchtime. And, and uh, so, so one day I'm, I'm out there with Samuel and Elwood. Uh, he's like, uh, he's pulling out his, his, his lunch. And, uh, and, and Samuel, my son, he's about four at the time, he noticed that he pulled out his two chocolate chip cookies and he, and he laid one chocolate chip cookie down and his lunch was here and he started eating the other one before he ate his lunch. And, and Samuel, Samuel said, Hey, Daddy, he's, uh, Mr. Elwood's eating his cookie before he eats his lunch. And... Uh, and uh, <laughs> I said, yeah, I know mommy would never let you do that. <laughs> he's, o- he's, only the- he's only doing that because his mommy isn't here, Samuel. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so Elwood, he looks at Samuel and he says, oh, he says, Samuel, you know, when you get to be my age, you don't take any risks. See, the way I see it is I want to have, have a chocolate chip cookie before, you know, my dessert before I eat my lunch and after I eat my lunch because you don't know what's going to happen in between, he told me. <laughs> the story was way better than my retelling there, but uh, anyway. Uh, and then, uh, it's hot in here, isn't it? Good Lord, bring it in. Bring in the air, the fresh air. Open the windows. Uh, uh, so, anyway, another time, I'm hanging out, and I'm just trying to relate to these guys. They're a lot older than me and a lot smarter. And uh, so I'm trying to relate to them, and one day I, I just realized that, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm 34 now, and... I meet a lot of, you know, the last couple of years, the last several years, actually, I've met a lot of NFL players and such that listen to my music, and the only problem with that is that I find out that they're, you know, most of them are 10 years younger than me, and I remember a time when they were, like, older than me, <laughs> and I realized that that's like a passageway in a man's life. This is like my first, like, little passageway, so I, I thought, oh, that'd be cool to talk to them about. So I just brought it up. I was like, is it a passageway in a man's life when you're older than the guys in the NFL? <laughs> so Elwood, man, he's like never smiles. He puts down his sandwich. He's eating his sandwich. He said, you know what another passageway in life is? I said, what? He said, when you're older than the people in the obituaries. <laughs> And then this other time, just kind of hanging out with, uh, oh, thank you. Oh, ooh. Oh. I feel like Benny Hinn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, um, anyway, so this other time, he says to me, he says, you know, I... Uh, Bob is out there and he says, you know, last night I picked my uh, gravestone out. And I was like, what? You picked your gravestone out? He said, well, yeah, Jason, you know, I, I've let my wife pick out all of the furniture in our house and decorate it for years. He says this, he says, but, he says, but I don't, you know, we've been married for 50 years, but I don't, I have to tell you just between me and you, I don't like everything she picks out, you know. <laughs> 
He said, says, I was terrified that maybe I'd just die and she'd pick an ugly gravestone and then I'd be, all my friends would become visiting me under this ugly gravestone. So, pick, so I lodged that in my head. I said, that is a man that picks his own gravestone. You know what I mean? That's got to go in a song. And I, was, uh, and I was talking with a friend of mine thinking about uh, Abraham. And uh, this friend of mine said to me one day, I was thinking about Abraham in Hebrews, and this friend of mine said to me, Ben, he said, Jason, I don't have a clue where I'm going. And I said, Ben, nobody knows where they're going and what they're doing. He said, what do you mean? I said, the only difference between people that... <laughs> We're going to start this song soon, I think. The only difference between people who think they know where they're going and think they know what they're doing, and people, you know, is circumstances. And blessed are you when your circumstances are such that it reveals to you your, your need and your dependence on God for everything. That you don't have a clue where you're going. And the, and the reverse could be true. Cursed are you if you think your whole life you knew where you were going and at the end you find out that you didn't, you, you didn't even know. <laughs> so we wrote a song about it. the graveyard and the garden. Is it right? 